Hello, and welcome back to Colonel O'Truth's Miniature Issues. In this episode, I begin construction of Undercrag City's mighty Southgate. Southgate is designed to strike awe into the hearts of visitors and invaders alike, and is therefore much more grand than the East Gate that I designed earlier. I took the time to come up with some concept drawings before I began this piece, which is something I don't always do. Many of my designs are in my head, and I just get on with them. For Southgate, I felt it was worth spending a bit of time coming up with some sketches. I began with a scale drawing, more or less, and then started transferring this onto foam board to begin building the basic structure. It was a case of designing one piece at a time and building up from there rather than designing all of the pieces at once like I might for a smaller house. I cut the archways and as usual spaces for doors and windows. Basically just duplicating the techniques I've already used on the towers elsewhere in Undercrag's defences. Here I'm cutting out a piece with windows that will overlay the front of the building, adding some structure to it. Where stonework will be exposed, I'm peeling off the paper but I'm leaving it where I need things to be glued together. It gives a better purchase. You can see there's a large space behind where the windows are going. Now some 30 millimeter foam, putting some buttresses on the front of the gatehouse. I'm taking my time cutting through the foam, trying not to do it all with one stroke, which would just tear it. And obviously my blade is very sharp as usual. Then drawing stonework in. Checking it against the city walls. and now working on the next piece. Here I'm returning to a piece of paper I used in a previous episode and photocopied. These are my window templates. This enables me to keep everything looking fairly uniform throughout the defences of Undercrag. These are the sides of the gatehouse and the doors are designed to line up with the fortifications. At least, that's the theory. It might take some adjustment. You can also see there are doors leading onto the tops of the buttresses. These will become fortified galleries for archers or watchmen. It's always quite interesting how basic and fairly unimpressive these pieces can look in the early stages. 
It's always worth remembering how good they can look and just keep going. It'll be worth it. I'm preparing to leave little sections of paper on the model to have stone supports coming out underneath another structure. Later on I'll actually change this design. As I'm recording this, I'm about to hit 300 subscribers on YouTube, which is fantastic, so thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. It's great to receive your support, and I love answering your questions and comments. I'm really enjoying sharing these tips on how to use simple techniques and materials to achieve great results. And if you're working on your own projects, I really hope these videos are helping you. Let me know. Now back to Southgate. I'm adding more buttresses, this time to the inside of the gate where it faces the city. The doors and windows you can see will eventually be closed off with a different structure than I had originally intended. Applying a generous coat of glue with my faithful pointy stick. And a bit of tidying up. and I'm ready to glue in the sides. Nearly made a mistake there. Blue masking tape to hold everything in place while the glue dries. Many people use pins instead of tape for this, but at such a small scale, the hole from a pin can actually be quite noticeable so I prefer masking tape. If you are going to use masking tape, buy good stuff. Cheaper masking tape will probably tear your model. Now a rectangle for the top to straighten everything out and add some strength. You can see there are gaps, it's not perfectly glued at this stage. As usual, I'm not worried about that. It's easy to fix all of this up later. And you'll also notice that I've moved one of the doors where it was in the wrong place earlier. There won't be any problem disguising the join later on. And now I'm ready to start adding the battlements. These are around the same dimensions as the other battlements on the walls and towers, just keeping everything looking like it belongs. Getting a new sharp blade there. Very important with cutting this foam board that your blade is sharp. It tears very easily internally You'll cut through the paper, peel it back and find that you've got a ragged edge. It's always a good idea to cut the paper on both sides. It prevents any tearing. Cutting out the overhang by hand. I'm relying on the edge of the blade here, not the point. And I've peeled off all but a five millimeter strip. Again, just to give better purchase.
Now for the pieces on the front. These are just very simple small pieces of foam. A great example of why you should hold on to your offcuts. Working on such a small scale, everything is big. When cutting through the paper, very important that the point of your knife is sharp. You don't want to cut all the way into the foam, just across the surface. More PVA. And on we go. and another piece on the front. Holding it all tightly with tape and checking that it fits with the rest of the walls. At this stage, the whole structure is hollow. I've got to think about building lighting in later, and a portcullis, and the front gate. I've now moved away from my original plan somewhat. I'm adding a long section of stonework here, covering what was originally going to be a series of individual supports. I'm using the same thick black card as I used for the houses and other buildings in Undercrag to build a guard room, which will look down into Southgate Square. This is intended to look like a new addition to the gate, as if it wasn't originally part of the structure. Another simple but very important tip always use a metal ruler, not a plastic or wooden one. I have a collection of different sizes. This very small one is really useful for this kind of work. I've decided to work straight over where the door and windows are, in the hope that light will come through later. I'd realised it was going to be very difficult to get lighting into this new section as I want a retractable portcullis here which will get in the way of any wiring. I'd more or less resigned myself to this being impossible as you'll see I actually solved it later. Moving on, I've added stonework detailing and a space for a portcullis inside the gate. More about that later. And cleaning the good old pointy stick. Just scraping all the glue and paint off it with a knife. Of course, that blunts the knife, so change the blade. Now time for some balsa wood. Just the same technique as all the other buildings, two millimetre strips of balsa wood, horizontals first, then verticals, then detailing. If you look at the city in the background while I'm working on this, you can see I've put down a piece of foam core board for the street leading through the gate itself, and lying in a heap are the front gates. I'll be coming to those in a later episode. Bit more detailing going on.
I'm adding a piece of card at the back here so that I've got something to anchor the roof to. Now pieces of matchstick. These will give me beams, which will enable me to create the same characteristic saggy roofs as I've been applying to all of the other buildings. Thick paper from a sketchbook. and water to make it sag. Adding some timbering underneath. Again, these are matchsticks, just a bit chunkier than the balsa wood. And now my roof tiles. As before, cardboard from a cat food box marked out in a grid, six millimeters by three millimeters. Patience is a virtue, they say. There we are, one nice saggy roof on an overhanging guardhouse. I'll be continuing with Southgate in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and until then, bye for now.